Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In this video you will learn how to create a timestamp on your data and only refresh them and refetch them when necessary. In the final video of this project you will learn how to use the timestamp to check whether the data are older than 15 minutes and then fetch them from the server. All the code in this video will be done inside of the component did mount, but instead of checking whether the contacts exist, we will check if it's too old. And if it is, we will fetch the data. Otherwise we will console log a message. The first thing we'll need to get is the contact contacts date from the local storage. You should be very familiar with the way how to get it localstorage.getItem contact state and if it exists then we want the new date and we will pass in the contact date timestamp we'll paste it in and actually now when I see the local storage get item here so many times we can create a constant date that will be actually the local storage get item okay the code looks much more neater And now we need to turn the date into a number using the parse int. And then we create a constant now, which will be new date. Okay, so currently what the time is, we will save it into the now. And then we can create the data age. Okay, so we'll check the now minus the contact state. And we'll divide it by thousand times 60 which will give us this value in a minute and we will round it up using the math.round so the data age is now a value in minutes now we can simply create two old constant where we will check the data age and if it's greater or equals 15 then it will equals true which means then we will be fetching the data we can also log the data age inside of the message. So let's change it to backticks and type in using data from local storage that are and we use the data age inside of the curly braces dollar sign curly braces data age minutes old. Okay, so this will spit out a variable inside of that string. So we'll know in the console how old the data are. Before we jump into a browser, let's quickly recap. We got the date from the local storage. Then if it exists, we're creating a new date where we're passing the date from the local storage. Then we're creating a now, which is a timestamp of right now. And we calculating the data age. So how old the data are that will give us a value in a minute. And then we simply comparing the data age if it's greater than 15, we fetching data. And then inside of the console log, we are rendering the data edge as well. Okay. In the browser, if we refresh the page, we'll see using data from local storage that are zero minutes old because we've just refreshed the page. But if I went, wait a minute and by the magic of speeding up, I'll just skip straight away to one minute old and if you keep waiting and staring at the screen you'll see the number going up now i will refresh after a long delay and you'll see the data refresh but we didn't see the loader and we've seen the old data straight away changing into the new ones and on the next refresh we go back to the local storage so the issue is that inside of the fetch data we need to set the loader turn the loader on inside of the fetch data method we'll use this set state and we'll set the is loading to true and we set the contacts to an empty array this will set the state at the start of the fetch and then when we're fetching at the end of it we are overriding it back to contacts and is loading false because we don't want to wait another 15 minutes we'll just change the duration to one minute and if i go back to browser and refresh after the delay we will see that we have the 
loader again on and the page is empty or the content is empty while we're fetching the new data. Okay, so hope that makes sense. I'll repeat it again. We needed to reset the state and set the loading to truth and reset the contacts to empty array while we're fetching the data. And as I mentioned before, this fetch API is not fully supported in all browsers. So if you need to support one, if you need to support old IEs, then I recommend this isomorphic fetch API polyfill. And it's quite simple to install npm install isomorphic fetch and ES6 promise. So let's do it together. Quit the build, paste it in. And when it's installed, we'll simply call it at the top of our index.js. Let's open the index.js. And just before the Reactom render, we will paste the ES6 promise and isomorphic fetch like this. And this will enable the fetch in old browsers. Here is a proof. I've got a open application which loads the fetching data inside of IE11 and still we're getting the right data. Okay, so here is a proof that it works in old IEs. Another alternative would be to use third party libraries like Axios, SuperAgent, or RSVP. Okay, so all three of these libraries do the same thing, they let you fetch data and consume the response in whatever fashion you want. So check them out. I'll link to all three of them under the video. But hopefully the fetch API will be soon supported in all the browsers and we can ditch the polyfills and third party libraries as well. And the final bit of code in this demo, we will do an on click event on the button. So when the user clicks on the fetch now button, we will trigger this fetch data. So the method we just created, this will reload the data when the user clicks on the fetch now button. Here it is in the browser. We're clicking on the fetch now and every time we click on it, we get a new set of data. This is it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Until next time, happy coding.